Hello everyone, this is Ginger Pana. Welcome back to my channel. I wanted to come to do a little share on some mini rosettes that I have been making over maybe the past week or two. Um, sometimes when I want to just take a break, I just grab something and I play around with it. And um, I've been watching some, vid some videos here and there, so I know a lot of you have been posting a lot of inspirational and how-to videos so um, it's been very um, I've been enjoying it so thank you for doing that um, Jenny who is crafty hilo girl has been posting a lot of uh, quarantine quote projects that she's been doing and I'll link her channel below and I think she did some mini rosettes and she had mentioned that um, I think Bambi Deer had inspired her to make the mini rosettes. I um, also was inspired by Bambi Deer. I did see her tutorial and it popped up in my feed. Although it's an older video, it's um, about two years old now. So I will link that video in my description below as well. But if you type in uh, mini rosettes, there are several different uh, videos up there for you to take a look at. So anyways, um, I just want to come and share with you the things that I have been doing with these mini rosettes. So the first tray you see in here are mini rosettes, but they are made out of um, origami. So this one though, I think this one is a cardstock, but this these purple ones and I think the rest are all cardstock, but this purple one here is origami and origami is a Japanese paper folding um, craze that um, a lot of you have heard about and we have a Daiso here in Hawaii and I think our local craft stores also sell origami paper but Daiso has beautiful origami paper in different designs so I purchased this origami paper and I think it's cherry blossom so it looks like this So it's foil printed and it has 14 sheets in here. Okay, and then let me put this tray back in my organizer. Then this one here is another set of origami paper I found at Daiso. And this is really pretty. And it is, it's called Aurora Color. So it has a lot of holographic kind of um, feel to it. And there are 20 sheets of origami paper in here and this glare is gonna be massive but it comes in different colors so it comes in this white pinkish it's kind of orangey one this one I guess this is orange purple yellow and pink and the blue okay so i made a couple of sheets three sheets of the different the blue the orange and the white um, i think this is kind of white pinkish tone and so i wanted to show you yesterday i posted a video on sequin clusters and so i added my sequin clusters to the middle of this rosette here and here See, pretty now these rosettes measure about um, they're about an inch and a quarter in diameter but I'll show you when I kind of demonstrate what I do so some are less than that some might be a little bit bigger okay so that's using that origami paper sorry for that a moped just went up the street and then here are some vellum um, rosettes so this vellum paper looks like these are all from Daiso looks like this so it's a set that has 20 sheets as well and the designs I think are all the same it's just different colors see so you have white pink blue 
and I think this is an orangey peach and another white another oh no this is the same pe peach okay so I used some of the papers from there and I made these now these here in the corner um, I don't know if I saw a video or I, I forgot where but these are really hard to make so I think these are a quarter inch because they're half about half an inch rosettes and they're quarter inch and I score them at an eighth of an inch and they are a nightmare so here I tried to make some but I gave up because um, it, it was really hard unless my cardstock is too thick so I have not gone back to making those so it's okay I rather make the sequin clusters <laughs> So this is how I use some of the sequin clusters. So this is a little bit bigger rosette. So as you can see, I added my sequin rosette on this one and on this one. Okay, so just a really quick, um, with the origami paper, if you are familiar with it, it is very, very thin and very fragile. It's not as... Um, durable as using cardstock or paper okay so i got this yellow one this is the um aurora one so i scored it every uh, uh, quarter of an inch on my scoreboard and then i folded it now um when it gets to the end i had to cut it off because i wanted a valley and a mountain on valley on one end and a mountain on the other end so I had to cut off the last score line of my paper okay by the way these are the Tim Holtz the new haberdasher I think that's what it's called I love it so I bought I think bought three of them they came in two different sizes I bought two in this size and I don't know where my other one is it might be on my other craft table but anyways I love those okay so after I scored it and I'll show you first the scoring Okay, so here's the vellum one I'm going all over the place okay so when you score this um, this one or the thinner the origami paper you really have to hold it because it's gonna start to curl so I I make sure I have it all straight when I start and I make sure it doesn't move and then I score it every quarter inch and I kind of make my score lines a little bit deep but not strong enough to tear the paper and then I start moving down the paper now you're gonna see that this side the left side is gonna start to curl so if you don't hold it down and as you score you're gonna start going crooked because the paper is curling Sorry, I'm usually faster. It's just that I have the camera in front of my face. Okay, so like that. So now I have to finish scoring it because I'm not going to be able to line this thing up. But so you can see I'm really holding the top and the bottom down with my right hand. I'm left-handed. So um, I'm really holding it down so that the paper doesn't shift while I do this because you see it's already kind of lifting up and going wonky so if I let go of my right hand I'm probably not going to be able to keep track of it okay so by the time you come to the last quarter inch it is six inches so um, if you want to have two of the same valley and mountain fold at the end you don't have to cut it off but that's why I cut mine off okay so then you start folding it I always start I like to start out with mountains so that I can kind of line up the first fold 
and then I just go back and forth. Okay, so that's how I fold it. So I do it all the way until I hit this part. Okay, so let me move my scoreboard. Okay, now um, in some of the tutorials after you score it, um, they would put it in their paper trimmer and cut the paper. But because the origami paper is so thin, I found that I could cut it with my scissors while it's folded like this. Okay. So I would kind of use my, um, my mat has, under this has a grid, so I'm off to the side. So I kind of figure out how much, uh, how half an inch will be, I'm kind of estimating it. So see, I would just cut it. So I would kind of eyeball it. How big? So you can even have bigger ones. So you don't have to adhere to the exact measurements, which is why you saw I had different sizes. See how easy it is to just cut it? Okay. So then I would have all of these accordion folds. So then I would go and I would glue each one. Now, I used my hot glue gun, just a little dab, because, um, oh boy, now it's pouring. Because if I use my wet glue, because of the type of material that this paper is it wouldn't hold it very well it would be slippery and it wouldn't dry very nicely boy it's storming and it's supposed to be 90 degrees today so I'm just taking a little break I'm at lunch now <laughs> working from home but I'm taking my lunch break okay so then you would um, just fold it down like this so you really have to maneuver it because the paper is very thin so it's not the easiest thing to work with see like this so yesterday I learned or last night I watched a, a video from let's see from nurse Tara and uh, she did a video on paper rosettes my tips and tricks and I loved it it was like it, it's a long video because she did it live and um, it was like an hour and a half video but it was really great to watch it because she put in a lot of comments tips and listen to you could see what other people are commenting on but one of the tricks she did was she put a dollop of hot glue in the center of her rosette where it was gonna fold down and then she squished it on there and held it with her protective finger but I think I'm okay if I don't use it I think in case the glue oozes out over the hole and you burn yourself so she would hold it like that for a little while until it dried and I thought that was a great um, take on it because before that for the other rosettes I was getting my little um, circles that I had punched out and they're somewhere here I can't find them now oh, here so I was getting my little circles that I punched out and see they're very tiny because um, depending how big your rosette is so I would put hot glue on here and try to put it here and ugh. so I let it sit there so and I use a silicone mat so that it, the hot glue would just pop off. So see, look, I'm a little bit off, but you can always go back and glue it. Okay. 
okay so I really love that trick so thank you and that tip thank you nurse Tara okay so then um, you have a rosette already done see So that's how I made my mini rosettes with using the origami paper. Um, I think I tried to do it with the. Did I try to do it with this one? I can't remember now. I I don't think so. I think I had to put it back in my paper trimmer and cut the cardstock because when it's all folded up in an accordion fold, the paper's too thick. So I had to put it with the paper cutter. Okay, so that's a pretty one. So I'll add it to my stash. Okay, the next, let me fix something here. Okay, so before I end the video, I wanted to show you my other rosettes that I took off of Nurse Tara's tutorial. Okay, so I used the Tim Holtz rosette um, die and I realized this is the only it's not a um, thin lit but it's not a I guess it's in between the steel rule and a thin lit I don't know if you still consider a thin uh, steel rule but um, it only has one design which is the scallop and you see all those perforated marks I think um, Tim Holtz's rosette dies and I'm not too sure if there are other dies that do that but it has a perforation so you could fold it easy and nurse Tara taught us how she put washi tape in the back so after she die cut it she got her washi tape and then she put it across the back and I thought that was a marvelous idea because I think that's one of the reasons why I didn't like to use this die was because um, it would break so I did this, I practiced and I made a few and I put the um, washi tape and I guess it's so thin that it's so easy to fold still and I thought I had the Tim Holtz die that she uh, demoed with but I don't and so I ordered it off of Amazon. She was selling it in her store but it was already sold out when I went to look for it. Okay, so that's how you do it. And she gives some other tips about getting rid of some of the whiteness in here but this is a double-sided tape so um double-sided paper so i think it's you don't see the white too much so that's what i did and i used her technique where i got one done and then i put a dollop of glue she uses i think she generously uses a dollop and then she folds it down on it okay so you this one I can see that the glue is oozing out so I don't want to touch it too fast but I think that's why she uses the finger protector so she just holds it down like that for until the glue hardens and then she goes in and she says she always stickles all of her rosettes on the fold so I did it for this one beautiful so it's just a little added touch to it. And that's it. So you have to use it on a silicone mat. Otherwise, see, look, I did it perfect. Otherwise, oh, you know what? I think I meant to do, this is the front. Oh, well, that's okay, because I can always cover this. But this side is pretty too. Oh, no, this is the back. Okay, so don't do that mistake. But you, it's okay because I'm going to cover that center anyways with something. But good thing I did it nicely because <laughs> this is the washi tape. So you don't want you don't want to do that. You have to make sure that your rosette when you do it. Um, yeah, so the front faces so that the bottom, the washi tape area is on the glue. Okay.
like this one i did this i did this correctly this one i didn't i was like oh this is a pretty design on the paper and then i realized my washi tape is there but hey um i also saw some videos where uh ladies were putting washi tape on the rosettes or sewing it before they put it together so that's a good idea okay so that's about it um even if even if i do use this as a front because my washi tape is on pretty good you can always get some of the i made sequin clusters yesterday look look at how beautiful okay or you can use the heart one this one has the rainbow backing on it isn't that pretty So even on this side, I could even use this. Kind of busy, but. Okay, so I'm having a blast making my sequin clusters. So after my video yesterday, I it, drew, it dried to so this morning. So look, this is the one with that really fine seed beads. See, so yeah, nothing falls off and it's chunky. Yay, beautiful. And with that pop of gold, see this is beautiful because the butterfly's gold, the washi tape has gold hearts on it, and then you have this butterfly on it. And so you see all of this white, you see all the perforation. So I think that's what Nurse Tara was talking about. She didn't like the look of that part, so she would get a color dabber and she would color her paper and it's before you make your rosette so go check out her video I'll link it below okay but I don't know after I added the stickles on this one although the back is white I can't really see it okay everyone thank you so much for joining me um, and I will see you soon bye